Greetings, greetings. Gonna hang out for a few. I just posted it, so we're gonna give people a chance to come in. Goodness, my, looks like it might just be us two. We shall see. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get it started, Christopher. It's just you and I for now. And, uh, I always start out with letting people know I hope you had a good day, enjoying life, living life, and loving life. <coughs> that is my express intent and purpose in life i feel and basically in, in the post uh or the title of the zoom here we're talking about the consequences of violating a trust and the trust i want to talk about is in jose 4 verse 6 and it's clearly expressed yeah. people don't realize this and what it is, it's a, it's a generation skipping trust, if you look at it real close. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And I've got some verses up. And the one that we're looking at here today is Jose 4, verse 6, specifically. It says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It's the lack of knowledge that we are destroyed. And we'll come back to this. This is one very important term that we need to come to realize in a certain particular sense. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, 
seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. And what it's saying here is if we're lacking the knowledge to teach to our children and he can only recognize us through that knowledge and acceptance of that knowledge, he can only recognize the children of that knowledge. The children of the knowledge. And this is why this is so important because that's what we're supposed to benefit from is knowledge. That's our position as beneficiaries is to seek knowledge. And he's the one that gives knowledge. In the beginning, it was the word and the word was God and the word was God. That's where knowledge comes from. If we don't accept knowledge, then we're giving up his gift. Debt. That's what puts us in debt because then we believe in debt by rejecting the knowledge. And I, I use no ledge. I have no ledge. Commerce and, and commercialism and all that. That's the ledge. Yep, that's the ledge. The ledger. You know, that, that when they put a headstone, everybody calls it a gravestone. No, that's the headstone. And it marks a grave and it sits on a ledger, which is a ledge stone and it says seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy god we observe the law of our god our father which art in heaven how would be thy name thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven earth is his wife and this is where he pushes our laws or his law for us to observe the laws of nature and those are the laws that we're supposed to fear. Tornadoes, fire, wind, flood, the elements of the earth, the crushing elements of an avalanche, whether it be snow or rock or ash coming from a volcano. That's still an avalanche in kind. And we have to become noticing and observant of that knowledge and pass that on. That's the knowledge. And, when it's been, and that's what does us just fine in nature and when it's defined it's taking away the finite elements that we're supposed to observe and putting it in writing and making it as an imaginary element as if though it hasn't occurred yet it's altering our already preserved occurrence of how we per perceive ourselves by projecting it in person that's what commerce does as they were increased, so they sinned against me. Every time you sign a document, you're increasing the sins of the person. Therefore, will I change their glory into shame. Shame on you for signing a signature without first placing the interest of our Father, which art in heaven, who placed the word, his word, in beginning of his word, on your heart with his index finger. And that is where we get our scriptures. So the trust as beneficiaries the substance of the trust isn't actually substance the actual substance is the gaining of the knowledge that helps us acquire the substances the elements that are needful and sheltering against the wrath of nature That's what we're truly supposed to benefit from. That's the trust. And when we violate nature and give up nature and, and secede to that of personage in a fake fatherland called patriotism, and it tells us in the scripture, and we'll look at it here in a second, it tells us in the scripture that um, we're not to pay tribute to an earthly father, for there's but one father which art in heaven. And that's when we start paying tribute through taxation and paying attention to their codes, rules, and regulations as if though they actually apply to us, we have knowledge of how they all operate. So we can operate within that. We're the ones that are being deceived. And we have to come out of that deception. And the easiest way to come out of that deception is just 
to just relegate yourself to the simple knowledge of what really is. So let's let's go back here and look at some of these other verses in the King James Version of the Bible where they talk about knowledge. And again, as I talk about the index finger of God writing that word, the, in the beginning was word and the word was God and the word was God. Jeremiah oh, yeah. verse 5. Before I knew thee, or before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou was cast from the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. We were given a position of trust through that knowledge that we were in communication with him prior to being cast as a man unto this earth. Wherein then in Genesis 2 verse 7 it states that God created man of the dust of the ground and he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils and man became a living soul we were born men we are now supposed to act as living souls not as persons of nations we are unto the nations as living spiritual beings possessing mm -hmm. word. and that's what we're supposed to profess the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge in the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge and go to my site real quick. Because at the top of every page, it says hiring an attorney proves one is incompetent. Ye already have counsel. You've already been spoken to. All you got to do is ask and you shall receive. Yeah. Ask and you shall receive. And the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. That's what we're supposed to seek. Ask and ye shall receive. Because knowledge is in the heart of the prudent, and he getteth knowledge. The fear of the Lord is, in, is the beginning of knowledge. But the fools despise wisdom and instruction. Instruction in your heart. Your heart is created before your mind. Your heart has its own neuro, neurological nerves of which the mind is made of. But the heart itself has its own mind. Where when wisdom entereth into thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thine, thy soul. This is what the, the whole purpose of my name is in the pen name. El Hotep second. Let me clarify that. Is that El is the mind, the God within that has the knowledge. Which is a union of two that exist within the temple that holds both of them, the body. So I have the mind of both the heart and the physical being known as the brain. I have a mind there and a mind in my heart and they communicate so that this body, the vessel, can then transition in life. A prodigal son returning to our father which art in heaven this is the trust within that the, the soul operates through the communication of the mind and the heart within the man that everybody else observes in reality but in fact is a living soul that is operated by the mind and the heart not by your commands or demands or anything else but by an instruction that is already there when wisdom enter into thine heart, he instructed me already. And knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, because I accept that knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And, and if, I, if I accepted that oath of his knowledge, that as long as I follow his knowledge, he will never lead me astray. I have to, that through the forces of nature, there are violent things that happen. And have to be aware of that knowledge as well. He creates both good and bad. Proverbs 24, 5, 5. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Survival of the fittest is often thought of as in physical strength. In relegates to the obverse, which is negating or, uh, or realizing, rather, the physical strength of Mother Nature versus our physical strength 
and what we're actually capable of versus that. It's not our physical strength against each other. We're supposed to commune together and protect each other against the strengths of nature. That's how we overcome the fear of nature, is learning how to build structures that keep us safe, how to learn how to build eight family unit structures that are safe, how to build one family shacks that are safe, how to just move into a cave knowing that the cave is safe. How to transition from this box known as a home into a natural dwelling in the house of our Lord, house of Judah in the surname of Israel. If you want to place an address, Proverbs 8.10, receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. So I care not how they measure things in gold or silver value still is redeemed in the word the heart of him that hath understanding seeketh knowledge but the mouth of fools feedeth on foolishness gotcha. so those that want to sit on that couch and keep drinking the poison yep. and eating the foods that are destroying their their temple mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. laughing and crying over somebody else's pathetic life instead of paying attention to their own. And then when they hear the sirens and they get up from that little boob tube and they look out the door and they see down the street, a couple blocks down, they see the sirens and they see the police pulling somebody out of the house. But they negate to even pay attention to it or even listen to it. They have more important things. They got to go back to that couch and the, and the poisons and, and the, the cognitive dissonance. And then the next night they're doing the same thing. And the same damn thing happens. They hear those sirens and look out the door. And this time it's up the other side of the street, one block away. The next night they're doing the same damn thing. And it's this way across the street, just across the street. The next night, the same damn thing as their neighbor. What about the next night? What are you going to do when they knock on your door? My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my... Hey. This is a good part to read. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Go ahead, brother. Sorry. Let's start putting it away. Okay. Back to it. So I'm not going to read this whole thing, but um, the heart of the prudent, and it goes on to tell the fear of the Lord is, or excuse me. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. It, it, this is speaking of the time. This is what they're stealing by, by, convincing you to forget his law through public education. That's not knowledge. Public education is teaching you to remember certain things, not knowledge, period. They're stealing your time. Be patient and gain knowledge. Seek the counsel that's already there. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hath hath reproof is brutish. See, I don't care what other people judge me. That's of no interest of mine. I only know what is already judged in my heart. And it's very simple. Do what is good and harm no other. And I'm supposed to minister this gospel to all creatures, not just man. Breath of life makes all creatures living souls. 
my son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, though thou that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understand, not the words and how other people define them, but how they were instilled into your heart. Everybody knows automatically what's right and wrong, and that's how simple it is. And I'll post this link with all these verses in there when I'm done here. Um, Psalms 119.66, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. This comes from knowing right and wrong inherently and being able to stand up for another creature whether it be a creature out there that is not like us or another creature in likeness and image that we call man and saying hey wait a minute in my judgment here in my heart what this creature here who is in, in the same image and likeness is doing to this creature here in the same image and likeness or even a varied likeness of a living soul, a creature of any kind. And he's causing detriment and harm. I have a duty. I have a re we have a responsibility to one another and to God. And when we shirk that responsibility, we relieve everybody else of that same responsibility towards us. We cannot sit there and cry wolf. Obviously, we can't sit there and deny something that is supposed to protect us and then turn around and cry for it to protect us. We have to have knowledge. That's the only way that supports it. The only way. For one, or to one is given by the spirit of the word, or spirit, the word of wisdom. Spirit. That's, that's that living soul. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. Father's Spirit and knowledge comes by wisdom of the Son's Spirit and knowledge. To the Holy Spirit to be benefic beneficiary throughout eternity of that knowledge. So that we too may gain wisdom. Proverbs 1 5 A wise man will hear and will increase hearing or increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. I'm going to stop screen sharing here. I'm going to pop this link in here. And as I go on, I want to tell people, you know, I'm adopted. There's that link. And it's one of those funny things that I learned through adoption. Apparently, which brings me to being able to express Jose 4 verse 6 as the consequences for violating the trust and realizing that the trust is not in the name. It's in the spirit. And the spirit is the knowledge. You see, like I said, I was adopted. And it wasn't too long ago my mother stood in front of me and looked at me and said, the police of your I wondered right away. Because this is a woman that after adopting me at 10 years of age, and after being put in foster homes at five years of age, and having been subjected to multiple religions in those various, I believe, 15 to 17 foster homes, all preaching the same thing that once they adopted me, instilled further in me the scriptures of Christianity and the word of our father and his authority I wonder where she lost that knowledge. 
that she was trying to use to impress upon me when I was a young child. And I remember Jose 4, 6. She's foolish. All those different foster homes. You ain't my daddy. You ain't my daddy. Like I said, we're not supposed to pay tribute to the earthly father. For there's one father which art in heaven. So when this bitch. And excuse my expression. She's, wants, she's the one that wants to be the fool. Tells me I'm a lunatic. And I need to change the last name. You know, I thought about that ever since, people. I don't need to change the last name. And that is the exact point that I have to thank her for. Because that is that enlightening moment as the prodigal son. To say fuck you to the last name period. I don't have that last name. Little as adopted. I didn't carry any of the last names of those foster parents. And it's only presumed that I carry. As a common carrier. The name. Of the patriarchal military father. Conrady, because that's how it was instituted through a birth registration and not by a biblical reference. Birth registration has no foundation, none whatsoever. The foundation is pure knowledge. Don't be purblind. Observe what is. Clinton said, it depends on what your definition of is is. There are so many uses of is, and that is what the point is. What is. Not what was or what might be. I don't live my life on ifs or or potentials, or possibility, what is. Anybody got any comments? We're, we're open for a while, and it is recording. Well, I was just going to say. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ann Woman. Hello. All right. Anybody else? Can you hear me now? Hey, there you go. There okay. You go. Sorry. All right. So I was just going to say, it's just amazing how some of these walking dead are so, they don't even want to listen to you. I mean, it's, and I made the mistake. It's my mistake. I, you know, I tried to share the truth with some people and uh it hurts it hurts when people are literally saying that you're a thief and that you are twisting god's word and that you're all these like hateful things that they want to throw at you you know it does hurt but at the same time it's like what you're describing here i mean th this is the truth it's in the bible yeah and you can't deny it you know um, when you learn that scripture and how to use it, that's what it's about using. And it's the same with knowledge. We're not supposed to own it. We're not supposed to patent it. The hell's this shit with patent and trade. I, I, I have you not learned the first thing about observance. That is patent. Patent is what is observable. It is what is not what you wrote in the book, according to some other day and time, whether it be past or future, what is now. And people forget that because they, oh, my God, Christmas is coming up. Huh? Huh? 
uh, rewind, rewind this Zoom when I get it posted and go back to the thing about how I showed you where they're stealing your time. He doesn't talk about time. He talks about your places and your good works and the effects. And that's why I talk about the consequences of violations of the trust through Jose 4, verse 6. If we don't pass on that knowledge, that's the violation of the trust. This is why they have their non-disclosure laws. And then everybody wants to sign a, 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 non a, a, a non-disclosure agreement saying they're not, they're not going to disclose things. And then they want to talk about secret societies. Really? What's so secret? I mean, I really want to know what's so secret. Does it affect me? Oh, my gosh. It's a secret to you? Okay. See what I mean? Everything, go everything they, uh, every minute, realize this, guys, every minute in their meetings goes through a secretary, a secret airy. What's so secret about it? Why is secret it discussion. A, yeah, why do we got to go through a secret discussion? Can't we talk about it before our Father, which art in heaven? How would be thy name? Let's get rid of all the names. You know what I mean? Huh? 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 In the house of Judah, in the surname of Israel, that way it gets rid of all that last name, first name, middle name, bullshit, pen name, all of it. Now we're talking about the words in our hearts. Isn't that what's patent? Isn't that what's supposed to be patent? Isn't that why we have another living being get up on the stand and testify as our brother Derek Gonzalez talks about? It, it comes from the term testes because the, the one giving the testimonial, which is an unlawful conversion of feminism, is supposed to testify by putting his testicles on the stand. And a woman cannot testify because she does not have testicles. So therefore, they convert it to a testimonial, which is an action, whether it be genitive, male or female. That's all it is, folks. Well, I don't care if you got genitals or not. The biblical scripture tells us all to write for these words are true and faithful. And those words are supposed to be on our hearts. Not on some damn piece of paper. That's where he scribed them. That's my holy writ. His scriptures. Yes, the family jewels. So considering that it's supposed to be on in your heart. And then not on a piece of paper. How does that look for you? Like. What does that look like knowing that the word is in your heart and you got a violator coming towards you and the heart and the word is in your heart? What's that look like for you? Okay. Um, I'll tell you a specific incident where I had eight people surround me. Weapons. Mm -hmm. Looking at me for harboring a fugitive while they were on a manhunt for a man, his woman, and they're three little ones. They were concerned for these three little ones because mom and dad wanted to teach them how to observe nature in the mountains without a public education system and school them themselves through scripture. Grandma wasn't quite going along with that, so she had local parentis step in, ex parte. Anyway, they contacted me here in Iowa with guns and everything, threatening to uh, arrest me felony-wise for harboring fugitives and wanted to have my ID. Well, I'm sorry, I don't carry ID. Well, what's your name? Sorry. I don't have a name. Oh, well, no, it, everybody's got a name, he says. I said, no. Only persons have names. Real men, we have Collins. Now, I've been called Keith all my life. And when my mom and dad got mad at me, they might call me Keith Orland. And I hail from the family little. Now, I hear I was born around August 20th, 1966. That was pretty much the end of discussion. 
So and these, are the people, and these are the people that during uh, approached me during the proceedings of a protection order put out by the local district attorney and federal code says protection orders are given full faith and credit. So what the fuck are these people even doing talking to me knowing that there's a protection order? Huh? Huh? I'm in agreement with you. You don't, you don't have to use the scriptures. You speak scriptural like. You get rid of their damned language by letting them know you know the terms without telling them the terms and sp in using specific language. Because if that any one of them people would have wrote down that I gave them an, a first, middle, and last name, that would have been fraud upon the court because I specifically stated the terms and conditions of the communication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So from where you stand and where I stand, we agree that the uh, the word being in your heart reveals itself in the embodiment of those words. Like we're we're taking them on as a function of how we move, not as a function of how they lay on a piece of paper. Correct. And that's how their functions work is according to the paper. So remember, mm -hmm. when they're looking for that name, that first, middle, and last name. Um, mm -hmm. Now, if you'd like to locate that first, middle, and last name, officer, I suggest you contact the Bureau of Vital Statistics at the Secretary of State's office, because I assure you, they have a certificate in file. They are in custody of the name. I suggest you go serve your harboring future to warrants against him there. So with that's that a, being that's said, that's a proper address to service. Yes, sir. So with that being said, you asked a question earlier that I, I'm going to tie in with this. And you said with mother, you said you wonder where did, you know, the scripture. And, you know, correct me where I'm where I'm incorrectly stating it. But you basically asked, where did that same scripture that she was trying to teach you go for her? Where did she lose it? Exactly. You know, when, when the authority in the, in the Bible says, uh, ye shall pay tribute to your father, which art in heaven and, and no other. Why are you mm -hmm. sitting here telling me that the police are my authority and I'm supposed to idolize them in some way or another? Because she was a lunatic. <laughs> So I, and, and I realize, folks, both my both of those mom, both my mom and dad that adopted me, they both worked for the government their entire life. My dad was a real estate appraiser and my uh, mom worked for Social Security Administration for 29 or 27 years. And she worked for the state of Ames laboratory prior to that. So check out the projection. She called you a lunatic, right? But she one USC works. one. She works for a lunatic organization, which I um, posted the definition to lunatic in the chat when you uh, said that. I went and looked it up. And luna means moon. And, you know, the tick is just a, it turns the word into an adjective, which could mean literally anything. But yeah, Well, it, when we think of luna, it's the tick of a clock according to a cycle. Remember, I was telling you yes, earlier, yes. They're, they're stealing your time. They got you all oh, out, of, out of cycle. Yes, yes. So the cycle on in the definition is the moon cycle. So when she called you a lunatic, she was saying that you are a person that's going by the moon cycle, which we all should be going by the moon cycle at some point. So well, it's a balance of the cycles. Exactly. So, in a sense, they take a word and they turn, they twist it and make it be something other than what it is. Right. They make it function differently. And, and that's why <coughs> that's why etymology is so important. And I've spoken before about the other two things that I delve into as well, as, which is uh, etiology and epistemology. Now, etiology is the roots, root causes. And then we know etymology is root words. 
epistemology is the uh, root knowledge. It's, it's a root, root knowledge that we use to gain wisdom. It's the knowledge that we get from our forefathers and our own observances that prove to be true and correct and, co and concur with each other. Now, if our forefather tells us some information and through our, our observances, um, we find that it's not correct, then is the information that our forefathers gave us knowledge? Can't be. I'm it's so false. appreciative that you you under you understand that. Because I was talking to my mom about my younger brother, and she said, "Why do you do some of the things that you do?" Like and you. what I tried to show her, what I show her is exactly the passing of she's passing it down onto him. And then telling him he's out of his mind. Yeah, it's a right and of a, a beneficiary to the legacy. And the legacy is knowledge. So despite whether you get it from your mom and dad, you have the, the, the right to benefit from that knowledge, no matter where you get it. Right. But she didn't know the effect, like you was explaining a little earlier, the effects of her behavior and how it played out into his 20s that he's doing the exact thing that she told him not to do. Well, what they don't understand is the psychology of a child. As children, we do what we see more so than we do what we told. Yep. And this is why, you know, I was in a 12 step program for, for a while. And um, one of the things is that uh, I told them consistently, I can't help you without first helping myself so first i must help myself but in helping you then i continue to help myself it's a progressive mm -hmm. cycle it's just like the <laughs> commercial we see on tv in, in the uh, uh late 90s or whatever um i do drug i work more so i can make more money i make more money so i can buy more drugs I, work more. I buy more drugs so i can i work more you know it's a vicious mm -hmm. cycle so i learn more so i can share more knowledge so I can mm -hmm. learn more because I can only help others. by I can only help myself by helping others. And this is why I say when I pass on knowledge to you guys, you guys have a duty. Yeah, you know, I have a duty as a beneficiary of that knowledge to be a grantor of that knowledge. That's the true trust element of the generation skipping trust. We don't have to have what they define as parents or trustees. It's a simple trust. Grantor grantee even if you don't have an absolute trustee there is one that's already been placed and you are redeemed simply by following his way now let's talk about weights and measures and what way does what way See, I think knowledge weighs a lot more than any bar of gold and all Thank bars you. of gold put together. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. No, uh, it's I so funny you are talking about this because uh, I literally for the past few days I have been talking to God and I've just been like, you know what? Just find somebody else. I, I don't want to tell these people anymore. I'm done. They want to they want to try and drag my name. Uh, uh. Well, you know, not my name, my calling. But uh, it's so funny you are doing this. So how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the, you know, the arrows, I guess? I, I quit signing. <laughs> I let them know my capacity in all manners. Like when I'm dealing with my companion, I let them know I'm the trustee of my companion. There's already two witnesses on the record. And most generally, people will recognize that no matter what you want to determine as any kind of marriage, they recognize the term companion and they recognize, Hey, these two are working together. When it comes to their, they, they still watch me on Facebook guys. You know, I'm one of those guys they want knowledge from. They see how, re remember that verse I read, he who seeketh knowledge, gaineth knowledge. Um, or, a, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. They see me growing. And I, and I hope you guys see me growing too, because I see you guys growing as well. 
you know, this is what we should be observing in each other is the growth, because that's what's showing us we are benefiting from the knowledge is the effect, which is the growth. And it's not in, in commercial growth or anything, but within ourself and how we're learning how to prosper in each and every element. One of those elements is we have an issue where um, the postal service didn't realize their job. And so I had to put it to them because we had silver coming up missing. Now, it's not that I placate to silver, but in, re in relation to my companion's removal from probate, we substantiated her private estate with substance. And that was missing. And it was due to them not following their guidelines. See, when there's a parcel that doesn't fit in that box, they're supposed to knock on a door. Now, me and my companion, we're very lonely people. We don't socialize much except with a few neighbors here and there. And we very rarely go out. So there's almost always someone here. And no one knocked at that door because we have two alarms. One little one about three and a half pounds. And one now that weighs about 80 pounds. And no one alarmed us. So I put a note on the post, on, on, the, on the mailbox. And the post lady tried telling me she was going to cut off my mail because I couldn't put that sign on that post box. Now, this is about almost three months ago. That sign is still on that post box. And I had the local uh, postal manager's number so that any incident I have in relation to the local postal system, he already knows I'm in, I'm in touch with the uh, Universal Postal Union's commissioner. And that's who we're going to communicate with if I have any issues. He's going to be the third party between me and the commissioner to get this shit resolved now time. They have an obligation in their transit system of freedom of transit. And those that enter into the mails through a commercial venue have an obligation through insurance. And it is insured in the gold standard under the Treaty of Bern and that constitution of the Universal Postal Union. Know these things and you know how to, how to let them know that you're not going to be fooled by any of their weights and measures. You know where they're all at. You know how they apply. And they don't apply to you. That gold, gold, gold standard, it don't apply to me. It only applies to any person they wish to apply to me. And I'm the only one that can authorize such personation. Period. Ain't going to happen anymore. That's why I quit signing. They know this. That's the knowledge they see. And that's why they don't approach me. It's... Uh, the local store, they have a, uh, a postal dispatch center there where they have a scale and everything. And right on the wall, there's a Department of Agriculture and Land Stewardship Certificate. That's for the judicial element that they get from the Postal Service to be able to use weights and measures to transfer mail items in their system. Now, that's a postal unit. Now, if I've got a United States postal money order and I want to go to that station and cash it, that weight, that, that scale right there says they better have money in that cash register to give me my money. So when the store clerk says, well, we don't cash checks, um, excuse me, this is an obligation of that scale that you have that, that is certified by that, that certificate on your wall. Would you like me to take a copy of that certificate to the Department of Agriculture? and have them remove it for violation of postal judicial obligation. Article one, section eight, clause 17, needful places and buildings. And if you have an agricultural contract with a needful equipment sitting in your building, then you have that obligation. He called up the regional postal uh, manager and sure enough, guess what? Oh yeah, we got problems with that guy over at his house. So now I've got the, postal, the regional postal manager talking to the local store manager about cashing a postal money order. They all going to start doing their jobs. All of them because I have the knowledge. 
And that's why it's so important. Just the simple knowledge of how these trusts work and who's obligated and who's not is in the capacity of the grantee, the trustee, and the beneficiary. I'm the beneficiary. I am not required to do anything. I can dismiss the trustee. And the trustee, the, the trust cannot fail for want of trustee because the beneficiary is deemed to be the, the true owner. Therefore, learn how to grant and benefit from knowledge. That's the trust. If you violate that, you violate your own position as beneficiary by being foolish. Make sense? With that, I'm done. Anybody else wants to make any comments? We got about uh, two minutes left. You coming back on after the two minutes or no? No, I think I'm done for tonight. But uh, I just wanted to put this out there to realize where the trust is. The trust res, it, the substance of the trust res is actually knowledge, which isn't substance. It's, it's the intangible thoughts and images and likenesses through our observances and our reflections and our communications. And that's what we have to fine tune. We have to learn how to coin our words or purse our lips. But I'll yes, tell you like this. Are you familiar with, uh, uh, how, how do you look at being in the spirit of the things you just said? Because I'm, I am like relating to what you're saying by way of me having a thought today as I'm riding on my way to work to say that I have to pay for knowledge because what they what they're doing is they're taking away the knowledge. Yeah. And, and so it's the, like we're here today. That's amazing. The way I do it is in my etymology research, a lot of times people think, well, I'm going to do this etymology and look up Latin roots and this and that. Look up King James Version of the Bible. A lot of times we'll find words and stuff that aren't in the King James Version of the Bible. But then the King James Version of the Bible will bring up a reference word that might be similar. So I, I always try to look through the definitions from, from the view of the scripture. That's the true origin. And the, the only reason I use the King James Version of the Bible is because it's the most uh, simple, simplified form of the scriptures that I know to date in the English language. But realize that that scripture came from German, right? Or German.